So, Congressman, you were a member of the Freedom Caucus. You were one of the five who worked against, who voted against the defense bill. It's the first time it came up, and then I think voted for it the second time. But where do you stand on whether or not there is a short-term solution, a short-term continuing resolution uh, with Ukraine money, without Ukraine money? Tell me what, where you stand. Well, I think uh, it's it, we have a short-term solution. Uh, Kevin is going to put a bill on the floor. Um, the uh, members of the Freedom Caucus and others who are concerned about uh, spending too much are going to get a few bills on the floor that reduce spending. At the same time, we add the Department of Defense bill that increases spending. So uh, I think that was part of the compromise. The other part of the compromise was to take some of the Ukraine funding out of the Department of Defense bill and have a separate vote on that. Um, no doubt. In my mind that that vote will pass in the house for the ukraine funding so uh, overall i think kevin has done a very good job in putting a package together that will get some of these appropriations bills passed then we go up, move on to the continuing resolution um, the, the next day and i think that uh, kevin has uh, an, an idea anyway on how to get that done if not uh, the senate will pass something and, and send it over to the house so um, i i think we avoid a shutdown i hope we avoid a shutdown it's not good for for anybody to have a shutdown. Would that separate bill with the Ukraine funding pass before the continuing resolution, or would you would do the continuing resolution first and revisit the Ukraine money down the road? So the, the Ukraine funding is just a small portion. It's not the supplemental that the president asked for. It's just a small portion that's in the Department of Defense appropriations bill. So it will, the Department of Defense appropriations bill, I anticipate, will pass now. And then the Ukraine funding bill will pass. And they will be combined again to send over to the Senate as our uh, appropriations on, on defense. And why will the defense bill, you, you wouldn't, couldn't even get a rule passed the other day. It's the second time in a row that the speaker of a majority party could not get a rule passed. That's automatic. So why would a rule pass for the defense spending bill now when it didn't just two days ago? Um, because there were two or three people that voted against the rule this last time who wanted to see some of the spending cut bills passed before the Department of Defense bill, which raises spending. And then there were uh, uh, one or two people who wanted to see the Ukraine funding portion of the defense bill pulled out. Um, and so uh, Kevin has done both of those things to put a bill on the floor that I think will, uh, you'll see almost everybody, if not everybody, vote for the rule, and, and most of us vote for uh, the bills themselves. But the bills themselves are below the spending agreement that averted the debt ceiling crisis. So do they have any chance of passing the Senate? This was a deal that everyone signed off on, and that House Republicans, the small group, are forcing the House to go against. Well, um, Kevin, when he ran for speaker, promised a spending number at uh, 1.471. Um, the uh, number that he negotiated with the president was significantly higher than that. So you've got two groups that are relying on two different numbers uh, in the House. Uh, there is a compromise number at $1.52 trillion, and I think that's uh, probably where most members end up uh, to get things done. Uh, I don't know if they, they will pass the Senate, but I, I do think that they will get through the House.